Hi there, hope you're having a lovely day so far. You know, with the many changes that COVID-19 has actually brought into our lives, have you ever thought to yourself, is there something that I can be doing to help boost my children's physical and mental health? I think a lot of parents have probably asked themselves this question at the time. Um, now, for the most of us, we actually know that uh, stress reduces our immunity, which means uh, during this, this highly stressful time, we need to be supplementing our diets with even more nutrient-dense foods to uh, help keep us all, the whole family, um, as healthy as possible and be um, building our immune systems. Now, we all know that when life gets busy and stressful, um, it just may be easier to turn to less um, healthy eating options as a more painless option um, for dinner uh, to be ready in just an instant. Um, especially now too, when supermarket shelves are not always stocking what and um, what we what we want to buy um, and what we need, we may tend to go for, I guess, the fast food equivalent option um, at home when cooking dinner. Um, and understanding that we've all got additional pressures on us at the moment, financial, with, with working from home and um, having the kids home in isolation, um, you know, all of those um, may find it difficult to be able to thinking about making positive life, lifestyle changes at the moment. The, the thought of having a change in the middle of all of this stress may be something that is just a little bit too difficult. So, um, but I guess if there was an easy way that you could make positive changes to your lifestyle and to your health um, without excessive time, without excessive costs and disruption to the family unit, the question is would you do it? Well, lucky for us today, our special guest Jacinta Callahan is going to share how we can actually do that and share her expert tips with us today. Now, these tips are quick, easy, and cost effective for us to implement into our busy, stressful lives in the middle of this pandemic. Now, as an introduction <clears throat> to our special guest, Jacinta is a lecturer of nutritional medicine a speaker and clinical nutritionist of over 10 years and specializing in children's health um, and treating children on the spectrum and or with behavioral issues. Now she has a Bachelor of Health Sciences with honors and, and is an EFT pr practitioner. Um, as a nutritional medicine and emotional health specialist and a former lecturer on nutritional medicine at the Torrens University, uh, Jacinta has seen when parents address the food intake of their children, uh, that it most often results in children performing significantly better in their daily lives and their health reflecting the same. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jacinta. How are you? Very well, thanks, Rachel. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, lots to talk about. Now, first of all, you treat a lot of children on the spectrum. Now, as a question, how have you seen dietary changes um, positively influence their health and behaviour and their schooling? This can be huge and often is huge, particularly, you know, within also a few weeks, it can make a big difference. So we've had children that... Um, had huge behavioural issues and slight tweaks to their diet, or you know, I suppose I see it as slight. <laughs> the um, and within a few weeks, the parents will come in and go, "They're a different child." So, it's a you know, the teachers, there can actually be some differences then. Yeah, and the teachers have you know told the parents, "Whatever you're doing now, keep doing it because we've noticed a huge difference." That's awesome, um, and. This whole pandemic has brought about such intense changes to all of our lives. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure you'd agree as, as parents and carers, um, really it's our job to shield the kids as much as possible away from that stress um, and really enable them to be able to thrive during this time and not adding to and, and giving them any additional stress. You've mentioned before that um, most the most important part of the child's development is their brain function and understanding how the brain and the gut actually work hand in hand um, and the microbiome health actually the microbiome health affects brain function can you tell us um, how during this time of increased stress can we actually help our kids to achieve both simultaneously by being that the brain function and the gut health can both thrive during this time Okay, so microbiome, it's, it's importance has become more known and more scientifically researched in more recent times, and it's huge. And a lot of our neurotransmitters, which is our brain function, 
most of the, those are actually created or started in the gut. Okay, so and it's not with the microbiome. We used to just believe there was good and bad bacteria, but now we know it's actually a real balance of this one has to be this percent, this one should be this percent. Okay, so it's a real balancing act. Um, things like processed carbs, particularly, which convert in our body to sugar, really throw that microbiome out. Things that help the microbiome are more the fats and the proteins, particularly if it's if there is an imbalance between, you know, say this I'm getting probably too technical, but between strep and E. coli, we need to reduce the sugars right down and increase the proteins. And that's it's a lot all, often that the strep E. coli balance which is out. Okay. So you're telling us that when planning and preparing foods, we just need to consider combining, I guess, quality um, protein, fat and vegetables at each meal, would you say, as opposed to in reducing the sugar yeah. as much as possible? It is about, I guess, going back to our parents' generation where it was uh, meat and three veg. Yes. It is. It's a, it, is, it is as simple as that, really. And the meat being any sort of meat or protein. Okay, so we, we, we reduce the sugars, but what about veggies? And we all know the kids don't like them. You know, what's your advice um, about parents stressing about the amount of vegetables that kids are eating at the moment? A few better than none. Yeah. Uh, don't, I wouldn't stress. It's the combination of veggies often. So little bits of a lot is better than one. <laughs> and starting them, look, even if you've got to put something on it at the start, that's not ideal to get them to say, okay, now I like, I now like this or I now like that and gradually weaning the additive, whatever, whether it be sauce or, you know, mayonnaise or whatever it is, weaning them off that. Yes. Um, just to get them to try different things. And the other thing we do often with the kids is just put a bowl of, of veggies out and let them pick and choose and present them in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, you just mentioned about sugar, which is really quite interesting. Um, are there any Netflix documentaries? And for anyone that doesn't have Netflix, um, you know, documentaries that they can source elsewhere that you can recommend the family watch with the kids um, that would make an impact on them? Yeah, during this time, particularly when they're a bit bored, it's an ideal time to, you know, put the sugar film on or watch some of the, um, dare I say, Pete Evans stuff, you know, where they talk about the effect of sugars and other things in their diet. There's also quite a good, um, I think it's a YouTube um, presentation from her parents of an autistic child. And it said, it's called uh, The Gluten Made Me Do It. And that shows this one child pre taking that out of the diet as opposed to after. And I'm not saying gluten's a problem you know, for every child, but it, it just shows the difference in the diet sometimes. And have you found in your experience um, that watching documentaries like these can help get the messages through to kids and in particular to teenagers about sugar? Well, it is because, it, you know, we're all either visual, auditory or kinesthetic learners. So if we watch a documentary, it shows us the different things. And we see different people talking about their experience and particularly for teenage kids, you know, if you can get a sports star, and one of the sports stars that does talk about this is Jason Akamanis. Now, I'm not a football fan, but he appeals to the teenage boys who are into sport or the teenage girls who are into football. And somebody like that saying it as opposed to mum, because we all know the kids don't really want to listen to mum, can make a huge difference. Yes. It's a good way of getting the message through to them. Well, lots to yeah. talk about. Um, to begin with, we published your article titled Healthy, Happy, Smart Kids. Now, for someone who hasn't read the article, can you give us a quick overview of what it's about and just what inspired you to write it? All right. So what inspired me to write it is, you know, my work with autistic kids and seeing the confusion in the parents when they come and thinking that they've been doing the right thing or doing their best and um, all the misinformation out there, really, as to what, is, what con constitutes a healthy diet. Um, and the other thing that inspires me is seeing the change in those children a few weeks down the track. So we used to have uh, the old food pyramid. Now we've ditched the old food, food pyramid and there's a new one. I actually have it here if you want it. <laughs> so it's almost 
or reverse. If you took the old food pyramid and tipped it upside down, that's the way we should be eating. Yes. Um, oh. um, they're um, getting back to some of those documentaries you were talking about before. I mean, the back of my mind, I've just been thinking there was a, a, um, uh, a Pete Evans Netflix documentary. Um, and is, it, is it a medicine? Medicine in the title, is that the one? And I just remember seeing that, as you were saying before, within a few short weeks, there can actually be changes with children on the spectrum very much so in their behaviour. Is that something that you've experienced? Um, huge, huge, yeah. Um, one notable one for me was a family that um, bought their, i say it was about nine, it's a few years ago now, and they brought him in uh, allegedly, seemingly autistic. And we made some changes to his diet. They came back a month later um, because they were from interstate. They came back a month later and I said, okay, what do we need to work on now? And they said, absolutely nothing. It was all. So with, well, and it was within a very short time frame, really. So without, without the need of any um, medication or anything like that, it was just a dietary change. Which is yeah, no, other, no other intervention needed for that particular child. Now that's not always the case. And, that was just a beautiful case where it was quite, you know, simple, really. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's get stuck into these questions. Um, lots to talk about, as we said earlier on. You know, what? question number one, now why is it important to not have excessive carbohydrates in our diet? All right. Well, carbohydrates, uh, we talked about before, they all convert to particularly processed carbohydrates, so the breads, the pasta, et cetera. They all, in our body, they convert through different chemical reactions. They can all convert to sugar, which, and we know now sugar is, you know, it's inflammatory, it's acidic, all the things that we don't want within our body, particularly, you know, the inflammation will reduce our immune system. So that's really important at the moment. Um, disease, ill health likes an acidic environment. Too much sugar, acidic environment. So it's all about creating an environment where the immune is as high as it can be and the ability of the body to be taken over by a virus is much less. Yep. Cool. Question number two, you know, what food, um, what foods are most important, if any, in our diet at the moment and which ones should be avoided? Okay. So obviously, yeah, the carbohydrates, the sugars, they're the ones. And look, be kind to yourself. I apply the 90-10 rule, mostly with the kids I deal with, you know, so that we have a bit of a cheat of 10%. So <laughs> they so can have a little bit of processed carbs so they don't feel like they're completely deprived. But now is a great time to change a kid's diet because there's no tuck shop. There's no other kids swapping lunches. There's yep. no peer pressure. Okay, so beautiful time for that. Um, so what can we give them? Um, all of all of fruit and veg, mostly veg, small amount of fruit because fruit's also a sugar. Um, fats are good, you know the coconut oils, the particularly coconut oils, antibacterial, antiviral, anti everything. We can include some herbs like I know small children may not like ginger, garlic, and turmeric, but if you just sneak the littlest bits in, they're also very antibacterial, antiviral. Yep. And, and then of course, and, veg. Uh, what, what about snacks? Kids love their snacks as well. So what, what sort of snacks um, that are not high in sugar and, um, and or, you know, without feeding them too much fruit also? I mean, parents are going to say, well, what am I meant to feed them for snacks in between their meals? So what are you suggesting there? All right. We, again, we're not at school at the moment, so we can actually have nuts for the majority of kids because they are one of the healthiest snacks because they have the good protein and they have the good oils in them, both which are going to help both the microbiome and the brain function. So, you know, and you can combine, you know, nuts we can still get in the shops. And what I suggest for parents is just buy a combination of nuts, stick them in bowls on the table, see which ones they like, mm -hmm. and, and then make packs up. when Once they're back at school, make packs up with the combination that they do like if they can take nuts to school. And what, what about for kids that have allergies? For nuts. kids that have nut allergies? Yeah, that becomes a bit more tricky, doesn't it? So it's saying, 
look, you can make healthy pancakes that don't have any carbs in. You know, you can actually make, you know, thin little chicken nuggets and um, even any sort of, like ham, we call it, you know, my kids used to have ham in the hand. You know, that's a snack. Yep. So getting away from that mindset that it has to be a carb and in a packet and whatever else. Mm -hmm. you know, even the, you know, the plain potato chip would be a lot better than a lot of the other things How because about it's still... It's still a real food. It's been processed a bit, but it still comes down to being a real food. Mm -hmm. How about popcorn as a snack? <laughs> uh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> I actually have a popcorn business. Um, so <laughs> that's probably, <laughs> um, I need to be a bit careful there, don't I? It's, it's one of the, it is one of the healthiest snacks, and that's why we've gone that way with um, a secondary business that we've got. Um, it is a corn product though, and so it, corn is in one of the top seven allergens, so we do need to have to be a bit careful there. And it still does convert to a sugar. Um, it's got a lot of fibre in it though, and it depends what's put with popcorn, I guess. Okay. So, as, yeah. so as much as possible to reduce the sugars in the meals and also to be con con considering how much sugar is actually in the snacks in between the meals also. Um, That's true. Okay, cool. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah. All right. Let's get started. Kids get away a bit more because they're because they're burning it off, whereas we're not. <laughs> yeah. 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 Staying away from processed food, eating real food is the key. Is the key. Okay. Cool. Let's get stuck into the next question. Is there any other key factors other than a diet that will boost immunity and health in general? Sure. So one of the. Uh, nutrients or it's actually a hormone that's really important is vitamin d so getting out in the sun so hopefully we don't get stopped from getting outside because vitamin d is needed for your immune system so really really important amongst other things mm -hmm. um sleep is really important so creating an environment for good sleep hygiene and so that the children get their eight or ten hours or whatever they need but making sure that it's a good sleep so not having technology in the room and all that sort of stuff, really important. All, a lot of your hormones are made during your sleep. So, um, and reducing stress. And there's a lot of stress and fear going around at the moment, so it's a little bit hard, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And that's where, you know, one of the things you can do for stress is actually teach the, we talk, you talked about um, emotional freedom technique, which is what we do, which is a tapping process. Um, yes, I do that in clinic, but... Okay. Yeah, you can actually teach. There's a lot of good stuff online for teaching the kids tapping. And there's some tapping songs they can do in the morning. And it's really effective. They've used it in the um, schools overseas where they've had the shootings to reduce that stress. They've used it for PTSD. Um, they're using it for a lot of things just to bring that stress level down. So it's a, have a look on Google and, you know, just have a game with your kids and teach them how to tap. Yep. Great. And it, um, there's lots of online courses that parents can do from home as well. There might be something that they can at least, um, should, should they do a, like a short course in that to understand it or should they just be watching YouTube tutorials? What, what should parents they just do? It. They could just do it from a YouTube to, um, video. There's heaps of them done with parents teaching their kids how to do it. Cool. And you can't, it's one of those things, you can't go too far wrong. Well, you're not going to cause damage. It may not be as effective as, you know, getting a practitioner to do it, but it still works. Yeah. Cool. So, so could you just give us a bit of a recap on all of the key points that, we, that we've discussed um, during our chat, just to make sure that we've, we've sort of got them all down and they're all heard, I guess. Okay. So three keys. Um, eat real food. If it grows, walks, swims. That's what we're eating. Uh, as much as possible. Be kind to yourself, use the 90-10 rule. Making sure the kids get good sleep, uh, making sure their amount of sugars, particularly refined sugars and processed carbs is low and helping them with their stress in whatever way. And, you know, that's, you know, our stress does translate to them. So also looking after our own stress levels and making sure that we're as okay as we, as we can be. 
and it's a difficult time for them. So maybe, you know, when the mums and dads are doing the tapping with the kids, they can also, by showing them, they're actually reducing their own cortisol levels at the same time. At the same time. And yeah. And as you suggested also, I mean, given that we've got a bit more time at home, we are, um, you know, looking for different entertainment and all that sort of stuff that Netflix documentaries um, on sugar and that sort of stuff for kids is, is something that, um, especially for teenagers in, in particular, that may actually help get the message through. Um, would you suggest that it's a good time to be watching it then? Oh, it's a great time. I've, I've actually excited in some ways. <laughs> I've got a nine-year-old stepdaughter and to have her homeschooling just for this short period I, I wouldn't be somebody who'd do it full time but you know during that time you know we can watch those documentaries I can get her in the kitchen okay and she's not exposed to outside you know tuck shops and all that sort of stuff she can learn a bit more about food during that time and we can the kids can get more involved in the in the home preparation of the food and maybe make some stuff up for ready back to school yeah and what a, what a great sort of activity to keep them busy and educating them at the same time about sort of mm. snacks and meals that are, as you suggested, to be um, lower in sugars and to be all round with the proteins and fats um, and the oils and the veggies, all of the good stuff. So it's a great time for them to be learning um, and preparing them and a great activity to keep them busy as well while they're at home. So yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. And, yeah. During our busy times, we probably don't want them in the kitchen sometimes because we just want to get the job done. <laughs> so things are a little bit different that way. Yeah. So overall, the benefits in actually ensuring that kids are actually got um, a healthy diet um, for for children and children on the spectrum, um, as you've just mentioned, the, the changes sort of can can be seen um, very, very quickly as well. So um, thank you so much for your time today. If anyone's got any other questions, whereabouts can they find you? Um, I'm located on, in Brisbane on the Gold Coast and I have a web page. Um, it's just my name, just in the Calligan.com. Wonderful. And we'll have that link at the bottom of the introduction paragraph. Thanks so much for your time and hopefully we'll have the chance to, to chat again soon one day. Take care. Thank you, Rachel. That was great. Bye. Okay. Bye.